Now, in recent times, a plethora of books have been published with a rather dramatic title urging us to hurry up and do things or change our habits. For example, 101 Things to Do Before You Die or 750 Everyday Ways You Can Help Clean Up the Earth. Well, today's perspective guest co-authored A History of the World in Seven Cheap Things, A Guide to Capitalism, Nature and the Future of the Planet, a work which looks at how our desire to get the best deal and spend as little as possible is having a negative impact on the world we live in. The economist and activist Raj Patel joins me now live here in the studio. Thank you for being with us here on France me. 24. You're very welcome. Now, uh, first of all, a very important question. It's a snack that millions of, of us uh, enjoy uh, every day. You have a problem with the, the chicken nugget. Why is that? Well, if, if you look into the fossil record, if there's any civilization after humans, um, what they'll find is you know, radioactivity from our weapons tests and plastic, because there'll, there'll be more plastic in uh, the sea than fish by 20, 20, uh, 2050. Uh, but they'll also find trillions of chicken bones. And the chicken nugget is sort of the symbol of the modern world, uh, because it, it involves vast amounts of exploitation. Uh, but it's also uh, a product uh, that is unsustainable, that requires a, a lot of exploitation of workers, uh, and which has some, some very grave consequences for the planet. But the concerns that you have are not just limited to the way that we eat. You've picked out seven crucial commodities about, uh, that, have a, that have a negative effect on our society and on our economy. Um, yeah, I, I mean, just, just briefly, when it, when it comes to a chicken nugget, those, those seven things are the, the, the idea that we can take this chicken and breed it into a, uh, a, a monster that's with breasts so large it can't even walk, and then that, that's the idea of cheap nature. Uh, but in the book, we talk also about you know, the fact that you need cheap work and workers are exploited. You need cheap care you know, to look after those workers after they're broken on the production line. Uh, cheap food for the, uh, for the workers and the chickens. You need cheap energy, cheap money. Um, and at the end of the day, we need to treat people disposably, and that's the idea of cheap life. Many watching uh, might say that cheap things are great, that bargain hunting and mm. getting the best deal is very much their way of life. What is so wrong with investing in cheap things? Uh, because uh, nothing cheap lasts forever. And at the end of the day, Capitalism is a system that, that dodges paying its bills, uh, and those bills are coming due. So if we're talking about massive climate change or if we're talking about uh, just, again, the sort of the exploitation of workers and, and the planet, all of these uh, cheap things have resulted in some fairly large uh, transformations of the planet that we can't carry on with anymore. Now, uh, say the average Joe is watching at home yeah. and that person is on the minimum wage, loves getting the best deal, cheap things are everything to them. What can they do at home to try and book this trend? Well, if you're on minimum wage, you, you know what a problem that is. Um, that, 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 to, to be on the minimum wage is to be living in a condition of precariousness and uncertainty. Um, part of the way you get out of that is not by shopping smarter, but by organising for higher wages. Uh, and luckily, around the world, we're seeing a real resurgence in unionism and the power of workers. And that is a, definitely a way to push back against this. In your view, is this a trend, though, that's gone on uh, for so long? Is it, is it now impossible to try and U-turn? Um, well, I mean, w w this, this idea of sort of using cheap work and nature disposably has been going on since Columbus. Um, but we've taken it to such an edge that now our planet is going to transform dramatically. And there's very little uh, that, that can be done to transform, to, to, to arrest those transformations. Uh, but I, I think what's exciting is the way that lots of movements around the world are organising. Uh, they're embracing not just, oh, the planet's going to change, but also thinking uh, uh, about how we need to get together as workers and as families to imagine what the world will look like after we, we go through uh, catastrophic climate change. You mentioned there a little bit about history. Many of the mm. problems that you've raised in this book do have their roots in the past. Right. Uh, I mean, we, we talk about how uh, Christopher Columbus, for instance, um, is the sort of uh, evil bad guy in our book because he, he turns up and, and manages to exploit everyone and everything. Um, but he has his modern uh, correlates. Uh, if you think of Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, for example, here are people who uh, have a, a history of their companies exploiting workers who use minerals that, are, that come from uh, parts of the world that, that have modern-day slavery, uh, where they also want to colonise you know, different parts. You know, Bezos is keen on the moon and, and uh, Musk wants to go to Mars. Uh, the, the, it's true that, that these ideas have a long history, but they're with us today, and you know, Bezos and, and Musk are the modern-day Columbuses. I'm going to put my hands up now and say that I've never heard of a, a term that you're flying the flag floor, and that's uh, 
agroecology. Oh, that, so this is an exciting idea, right? The, the way that most food is grown today is through sort of the industrial agricultural process. So th that means you take a field, you destroy everything on it that you don't like, and then you have to grow the one crop that you like and then you know, fight off the insects with insecticides and fight off the, the, the weeds with herbicides. Agroecology is a way not of fighting nature, but working with nature. So instead of uh, you know, just a single crop, you'll grow maybe half a dozen. You'll grow something that fertilizes the soil, like beans. You'll grow the cereals that you like, like corn. And then you'll grow something that shades out the weeds with big fat leaves, like squash. Uh, and this intercropping system uh, allows for the fact that you, then you don't have to use fertilizers or pesticides. And you can have a, a really complex, rich system that, has, uh, that actually ends up producing more and more nutritious food. Why is this concept? Uh, why is this concept? Sorry, so so rarely spoken about. Well, because it's uh, it requires that we value labour. It requires that we value farmers and farm work. Uh, and the way that that our lives are set up right now, we don't give a hoot um, about what you know what farmers are paid or whether they're knowledgeable and really putting their feet on the ground. What we want is cheap cereals. And if we recognise that actually we have to value farmers and the land that they walk on and the the, the labour that they, they put in we'll end up with a very different farming system and one that's much more sustainable. Now, you're in uh, Paris this weekend. You'll be, be, be appearing at the How to Feed the World event uh, here in the capital. That's uh, a roundtable discussion that you'll be having with uh, Cécile de Flo from Oxfam and the uh, French Vegetarian or Vegan uh, Association. Talk that's us through... Right what you'll be talking about at that event. Well, I, I'm, it's not all doom and gloom. And so what, what I'm, I'll be talking about is groups from around the world who have managed to end hunger and end uh, gender inequality and patriarchy um, and done it all without any of the, the sort of big ideas or genetically modified crops that we've been peddled by our development organisations. Uh, and that will be uh, as part of the, the, the vegan festival here in, uh, in Paris. And one last question. What does the uh, future hold for Raj Patel? What are you, uh, what's in the pipeline? Well, I'm, I'm very excited about um, uh, w working with uh, international organisations um, and with grassroots movements to, to show how it's possible for us to transform this world. And so I'm working on a documentary that uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk about next time. Great. Raj Patel, uh, thank you very much for coming in to talk Thanks to us here on France me. 24. Thank you very much.